This is the Orange Pi 5 Pro. It's an ARM-based SBC featuring the RK3588S system on a chip, which has four ARM Cortex-A76 cores, four ARM Cortex-A55 cores, a Mali G610 GPU, and the board is available with either 4, 8, 16, or 32 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM. I have the 8 gig version. It also has an NVMe slot on the bottom, but like most SBCs, it's intended to boot from a microSD card or eMMC module. There are quite a few versions of the Orange Pi 5, but this was the cheapest variant I could find. It was listed for £64 on AliExpress, but I actually paid £83, and I assume that's because of VAT, import taxes, and shipping. Now, before I delve into this device, let's address the elephant in the room, and that is why not get a mini PC instead, like those N100 systems people keep talking about. While it's true that x86 mini PCs tend to be better in terms of price to performance, upgradability, and software compatibility, there are also things SBCs do better. For example, they tend to be smaller, more power efficient, and have GPIO pins, meaning SBCs bridge the gap between a computer and a microcontroller, so the device you should buy really depends on your use case. In my case, I bought this SBC because I wanted to test the capabilities of Linux on ARM and tools like Box64 when given access to a more powerful SoC. So the first thing we should discuss is the operating system. Orange Pi have quite a few operating systems on their website for this board, and there's also a build of Armbian. But the OS that worked the best from my testing is Joshua Reek's Ubuntu Rockchip, and the reason is because it comes pre-installed with the Panfrost graphics driver, which uses hardware rendering whereas the default LLVM pipe driver uses software rendering, which is good enough for basic desktop usage, but it's not as good when it comes to more graphically demanding tasks. Orange Pi OS also comes with the Panfrost driver, but when I used that image, it kept freezing and I'd have to reboot the computer every few minutes, which was really annoying and eventually I just gave up on it. I'm running Ubuntu Rockchip from a 128GB microSD card, and I'm using a 240GB NVMe drive for extra storage. I don't know if it's possible to use the SSD on its own, but what you can do is use the microSD card for the boot partition and use the SSD for the root partition. It might be possible to get Windows 11 running, but I didn't look into it because I have no real need or desire to use it. In terms of general desktop computing in Ubuntu Rockchip, it's honestly very smooth. It doesn't feel like you're using an ARM-based SBC. It just feels like a regular x86 PC running Ubuntu. Normally when I look at SBCs, I use a window manager like i3 or Sway instead of a full desktop environment, but with this SBC, I didn't really need to. You'll have no problems using the LibreOffice suite and browsing the web with Chromium. I had no problems watching YouTube at 1080p or even 4K. There are a few drop frames here and there, but it's still watchable. And for me, the main limitation is my internet speed. The first thing I did after installing Ubuntu was install Pi apps. It was originally made for the Raspberry Pi, but it does work on this system. I compiled Box64 myself, but I used Pi apps to install Box86 and Steam, because Steam is a 32-bit application on Linux. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Steam to launch, so that means I was limited to games from other places. Speaking of which, let's talk about gaming. I first started with Super Tots Cart. A fairly basic 3D FOSS game where we have no problems reaching 100fps at 1080p low. Next I installed Minecraft, version 1.12.2 to be more precise. When I looked at the Raspberry Pi 5, I used the third party Prism Launcher, but Prism Launcher didn't work on this machine so I installed GD Launcher through Pi apps. In a single player survival world with fast settings, you can quite comfortably play at 1080p. I didn't lower the resolution and I didn't install any performance mods, so this should represent a worst case scenario. I then installed Doom 3, where again I ran it at 1080p low. I do own the full game, but to save time I'm just using the demo. This was also installed through Pi apps. Now onto some x86 games running through Box86 and Box64. The first of which is Helltaker, and it runs flawlessly. I'm using the itch.io version because, like I said earlier, I couldn't get Steam to work. I then ran Ultra Kill, another itch.io game. For a lot of these games, I couldn't actually get a frame counter working, and some of them don't have in-game frame counters. The performance in this game isn't fantastic, but it's fairly demanding for an SBC, 
and I am running it at 1080p, so if you don't mind going below 720p, maybe this game is for you. And finally, I wanted to see if I could get a Windows game working through Wine, so I ran the itch.io version of DDLC, which isn't a demanding game at all because it's a visual novel, and performance doesn't really matter in this game, but the fact the game works is pretty cool, because we have two sets of translation going on. We're running an x86 game on ARM, and we're also running a Windows game on Linux. This game shouldn't work on this system, but it does. There were a few games I tried to get working but didn't have any success with, those being Osu and Trackmania. I was able to launch the Heroic Games Launcher, but I couldn't get any games installed for some reason, although to be honest I don't expect them to run anyway. Okay, well that's all fine and dandy, but what if you're not a gamer? Well, let's look at some other intensive applications. I was curious what it would be like to run a virtual machine, so I tried to install Windows XP through QEMU and Vert Manager. The first time I tried this, I just used regular Windows XP, but it took forever to install because Windows XP wasn't designed for ARM, and so we have to emulate an entire operating system. The second time, I used an unofficial bootleg of Windows called Micro XP. It still takes a while to install, but once you've installed it, it's not too bad once it's booted up. I then tried to do a bit of video editing in Caden Live using some completely random files for testing. It rendered a 1080p 30fps video that was around 5 minutes long in 3 minutes and 21 seconds. I was honestly surprised by how well it did. Yes, it's a very basic video, but the experience of playing around with the software was very smooth. I managed to install Blender, but when I launched the program, it just showed a black window and immediately closed. However, people have gotten Blender to run on a Raspberry Pi, so I think it should be possible on this thing. Finally, I tested FreeCAD with the ARM64 app image. Admittedly, I'm not a CAD designer, so I don't know how to use this program, but I had no problem spinning a random model around. I also measured the power consumption of the system at idle, and the system under load, and we peaked around 11 watts. Overall, I'm very impressed with this system. Is it the most practical computer? No. Is it going to replace my desktop anytime soon? No. But it's impressive what a system like this can do when you have the right software. That's it for today's video, and until next time, cheerio.